What's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this video, we got two true pool party horror stories animated. Um, the original link for this video is going to be down in the description. So make sure y'all check that out if y'all want to watch this yourselves. And let's go ahead and get into this one. The day began with laughter and the promise of escapism, a respite from the heavy burden of my studies. Nigga said escapism, bro. The sun was relentless. I just be making up words every time I watch. Sign of relaxation over the water park that promised to wash away the academic frustrations with its cool, inviting waves. You need some My fry. friends and I, all of us desperate for a break, had chosen this place to unwind, to momentarily forget the burdens of our future careers. I can't believe you're finally taking a day off, Charlie. Jenna teased as we approached the towering slides, each one bigger than the other, their spirals like serpents basking in the sun. I know, right? I might even forget how to analyze a crime scene if I'm not careful. I replied, the irony of my words Who is this Joe? unfold in ways I couldn't have imagined. Okay. What we witnessed Peter Parker, the Joe? water park, the panic, the bodies, the disaster, we weren't prepared for it. As the day wore on, laughter filled the air, mingling with the sounds of splashing water and distant music. It was a cacophony of joy, until it wasn't. You're talking about cacophony, bro. Shut up. seemed an accident, a tragic anomaly. A young man, his body rigid, sank beneath the water's surface without a struggle, as if embraced by the depths. It was surreal, watching him drown in a pool crowded with people, all of us initially unaware of the unfolding tragedy. It's got to be a prank. Jenna muttered. I don't want to horrify her, but the moment they were pulling the person out, I knew he was gone. The arrival of the paramedics, their faces etched with urgency, shattered any illusion of hope that Jenna might have had. She screamed, like many others around, and hugged Dang, me. if you kill yourself by drowning, eyes. if you we kill yourself by drowning, bro, you really hate life. Because drowning is a crazy way to go out. I feel like I drowning is the worst way to die, bro. Observer, trained to notice the Suffocating to death is crazy. Look. It was then I saw him, a figure moving with a deliberate calmness amidst the chaos. He was an older man, his gaze fixed on the unfolding scene, a small, satisfied smile. He got some big ad lips. Did you see that? I nudged Jenna, pointing subtly at the man. Something's off about him. She glanced in his direction her brow furrowing. We're out of school, Charlie. There's no criminals hunting in water parks. Let's just calm down. Before I could answer, another scream pierced the air, drawing our attention to a second victim in a wave pool across. Jesus. At the first, this person showed no signs of struggle, simply succumbing to the water as if their body had betrayed them. This isn't right, I murmured, my mind racing. Accidents were not unheard of, but the lack of struggle, the complete surrender to the water, it hinted at something far more sinister. Determined to understand, I approached the man I had spotted earlier. He was now sitting alone, watching the chaos from a distance. Excuse me, sir. I began, my voice steady despite the pounding of my heart. Did you I see what got A four-pack and me, love handles. His eyes cold, the smile Crazy gone. combo. To have abs and on love handles? People should be more careful. His response was too casual, too detached. Do you come here often? I pressed, hoping to glean more about him. Every now and then, he replied, his tone academic, almost clinical. The conversation was cut short by the arrival of more emergency personnel, their focus on securing the area and attending to the victims. I watched as the man stood, blending into the crowd, disappearing before I could question him further. Charlie, let's stick together. Jenna said, her voice laced with anxiety. This is getting too weird. She was right. The festive atmosphere had soured, the laughter replaced by whispers of fear and confusion. Yet, amidst my fear, my curiosity, my need to understand the why and the how grew stronger. It was then I decided to follow my instincts, to delve deeper into the mystery that had turned a day of leisure into a nightmare. Little did I know, the truth I sought would lead to one of the darkest days in our recent times. 
As the day descended into chaos, with the park's once vibrant atmosphere now overshadowed by fear, my resolve to uncover the truth behind the sinister events only strengthened. Bro, just go home, Brody. The memory it's not even of that man's deep. detached demeanor lingered in my mind, a puzzle demanding to be solved. My friends, sensing my determination, rallied around me, despite their own apprehensions. We should really inform the authorities, Charlie. This could be dangerous. Jenna insisted. What the fuck do you mean? Were the authorities not there taking care of the two dead bodies? First, I need to understand what we're dealing with. I replied, my decision firm. The knowledge I'd acquired in my criminal psychology course became a beacon, guiding my next steps. Niggas never he solved the crime. Now he thinks he's Batman. To discreetly observe and gather any information that could shed light on the situation. So he took two classes. Now he thinks he's I Batman. The pattern as more people started drowning in other areas of the water park. Before each incident, the same man was always in the vicinity. His presence a constant among the variables. So Armed he's the common denomination. I approached the park security, relaying my observations and suspicions. The security team, already on high alert, promised to discreetly monitor the man while ensuring the safety of the remaining guests. As the security initiated their subtle surveillance, I couldn't shake off a feeling of being watched. Turning, I caught a fleeting glimpse of the man, his gaze now fixed on me, an ominous glint in his eyes. The hunter had become the hunted. The confrontation was inevitable, so I decided to confront him. Give me a second. On. Why are you doing this? I demanded, cornering him away from the crowd. Who are they? His response was chilling, a confession delivered with chilling calmness. I'm an architect of fear, Charlie. I create scenarios to observe human reactions to fear and paralysis. Bro, all of these stories are just some scientists who went fucking crazy, bro. My blood ran cold at his words, but it was his next revelation that truly shook me to my core. Do you remember me, Charlie? I doubt it, but I remember you. Your father, your father was my esteemed colleague whose life's work I continued after his untimely death. The connection snapped into place, a twisted lineage of study and madness. My father, a renowned neurologist, had died in a lab accident years ago. His research into paralytic agents lost with him, or so I had thought. You're his protege. I realized, the pieces of the puzzle aligning into a horrifying picture. <sighs> And today I prove that I completed his work. Plant-based paralytics, shared paranoia. You know, your father wouldn't have tried it on himself if your stupid mother wouldn't have alerted the administration. And now, when I should have been savoring my masterpiece with a glass of iced tea, you alerted security. I would have handed myself over once this was over, Charlie. But I needed you to be here. Your father was my idol, and you, his son, will be my masterpiece. Mm. He proclaimed, revealing a syringe hidden within his coat. The fight back, Charlie. Struggle was a blur, a fight back, fight Charlie. For survival. It was only through sheer luck and the timely intervention of park security that I managed to escape his grasp the syringe shattering harmlessly on the ground. The man was apprehended. His reign of terror... Damn, he killed end. 13 people? The scars of that day remained etched into my memory. The water park, once a place of joy, had become a scene of nightmares, with 13 people dead. The final twist, a revelation that haunts me to this day, was the understanding that the line between genius and madness is perilously thin, and that sometimes... The monsters we fear lurk not in the shadows, but among us. I remember the day as if it were yesterday, though it's been 20 years. My name is Ed, and I'm a psychologist. I've spent a considerable part of my career studying the impact of unresolved trauma on the human psyche. Perhaps my interest in this field was sparked by a personal tragedy, the loss of my best friend, Jamie, at a pool party I had thrown in my backyard two decades ago. It was ruled as an accidental drowning, 
but something about that day never sat right with me. The way the light danced mockingly on the water's surface as we all stood in disbelief, the hushed whispers that followed, and the faces of those present, seven boys and girls, now men and women, who I suspected knew more about Jamie's death than they let on. On Jamie's 20th death anniversary, I received a text from a sister. She was going through his old stuff and found an image of us from two decades ago. My heart told me that there was something more to his death, and then when I received that picture, I got reminded of my best friend. He always shared his food, taught me how to skate, and got me into Dungeons and Dragons. He even taught me how to tie my shoelaces. The least I could do now after 20 years was to use my experience and get the truth. Perhaps approach 20 like years is a long time, though. So I staged a pool party, mirroring the one from our youth, and invited those seven individuals under the guise of a nostalgic reunion. Each had moved on, or so it Damn, seemed. Damn, Jake got fat. Etching a map of the years that had passed. She looked like a crack at it. Eyes, I searched for traces of guilt. As the evening sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows around the pool that had been the scene of my greatest loss, I proposed a game of truth or dare. I guess they had the it same house as best friend died at. Shared history. I don't know how I people do that kind of stuff. Light, I suggested. Somebody dying in my house, I'm moving. Dive into the pool and swim 10 laps without stopping. Immediately. He still doesn't sink with his belly. Adam, once the jock of our group, hesitated, only a moment before complying. His dive was less graceful than it used to be, but when Big he emerged from the water, shaking his head like a dog after just three laps, there was laughter. A tension broke, but it was only the beginning. I followed it up with some fun tasks, got out some gossip, and chose some dares which we only did as kids. Along with these dares, I was also mm -hmm. passing them more gin and tonics, and it didn't take the group much but time Molly to get has champagne. In between, mm -hmm. I suddenly brought up that Jamie used to love throwing rocks at the crows which sat on the cables beside the pool, and the tone sombered down. This was an important play, a part of suggestive poking as I call it, and the very next question I put to Lisa, the same question which I had asked her two decades ago, but she refused to answer. Truth for Lisa, did you ever hide something important from someone at this very party 20 years ago? What type of yes. specific yes. asking yes. question is this? I saw... I saw someone push Jamie, but I was scared. I didn't know what to do. A collective gasp filled the air, and the atmosphere shifted palpably. I didn't want the awkwardness to linger, so I pulled out a few more fun questions to divert the attention on what Lisa had said. Dare for Michael, stand on the diving board and recount the day Jamie died, the whole truth. Michael, whose loyalty to Jamie had always been in question, climbed onto the board reluctantly. I... I can't, he stammered, stepping down. The admission of his cowardice was him. damning in its own right. As the game moved on, the air grew thick with confessions. Bro, and he's making this reunion shitty, bro. Yeah, Everybody's having a terrible time for this nigga. Thought remained elusive, dangling just out of reach as the evening wore on. That is when people started leaving. I will As leave I too, bro. The remnants this shitty ass party. Mind race Asking me about some dead nigga from 20 years ago. Any closer to the truth? Thought we were here to chill, brother. Had I merely reopened old wounds for nothing? Only time would tell. But one thing was certain. The game of truth or dare had set something irrevocable in motion. As a psychologist, I understood the power of guilt and the weight of secrets held for too long. It was the next day when the breakthrough came. Lisa I hate one, reached out. Bro, one thing I don't like about psychologists, bro, like I get that you study the human brain and whatnot, but they be thinking that like they know people inside and out and shit, and they know the reason for everything that happens in the world. Not saying all of them and shit, but a lot of them, bro. It's like, yeah, I get that you know the mind, bro, but at the end of the day, bro, you don't know my mind. Like you know the mind in general. And you, and you're, you're, you think my mind operates as the general mind does and shit, but not everybody mind, you know, operates the same and shit, you know? So it's like, damn, bro, chill. Like, 
You're approaching this shit like you know how exactly how everybody thinks, but that's not the case, brother. Talk to me. Ed like he's talking time. about people are guilty she and shit. How you know people just aren't over the nervous phone. and traumatized and scared? Her tone was unmistakable, and we agreed to meet in a Wow, while wow, the nigga might look nervous whole time, they could be they could be fucking angry and, and they look like scared, a you know? A girl I once knew. After the party, I couldn't stop thinking about what I said, about what I saw. It wasn't just someone pushing But it's me. like be it a person, bro. Stop trying to be a doctor all the time. Me like a physical blow. Thomas, one of our closest friends, always I the look at him, bro. party, always the one we thought would do great things. How had I not seen it? Why didn't you say anything before? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. I was scared. Thomas threatened me afterwards. I was just a kid, Ed. I didn't know what to do. And then as time went on, it just got harder to say something. Her confession, while seemingly straightforward, painted a seed of doubt in my mind. As a psychologist, I'm trained to notice discrepancies in behavior and speech. Like, you see what, like, he's saying now, like, like this lady, right, she just confessed. And he's like, hmm, I know that she just confessed, but this confession doesn't sound like a confession. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, brother? Like. Something about Lisa's this girl was like 15, alive. saw her best her friend die, which betrayed her. And then the, she the person that she probably saw kill the nigga was like, do this or something bad is going to happen to you. But it's probably fucked guilt. up. I casually mentioned the fabrication. He keeps talking about all this other shit. Like, Jesus. I like psychiatry to encourage honesty. You know, Lisa, they are reopening his investigation. They be talking to people like right? people aren't people, Jamie's like people are things. Recently, a locket inscribed with the initials LS. I know you had been cheating on your boyfriend at the time with him. Curious, isn't it? It was as if the floodgates had opened. Lisa's composure crumbled, the weight of two decades of guilt proving too much to bear. I didn't mean for it to happen. She sobbed, her confession pouring out. It had been an argument while the others were inside to watch an episode of their favorite show. It escalated, making her push him in the pool. He was super drunk, so by the time she returned a few minutes later, he had drowned. The locket, a piece of evidence I had invented, has been nothing more than a psychological ploy. Yet, it had been the key to unlocking the truth. See, bro, like, Lisa's... He talking about, like, truth this, truth that. But if you had to lie to get the truth, how do you know, like, I don't know, man. This shit be throwing me off the, the way, like, psychiatrists operate, bro. Exist, confirmed her involvement beyond a shadow of a doubt. It was a risky move, but one that paid off. Like, this nigga no made up a complete and utterly lie. Decades ago. So she With to Lisa's to manipulate her into the saying something. Reopened a dramatic turn. The truth about that day, long obscured by time and silence, was finally brought to light. The community was shaken by the revelation, a poignant reminder of how easily the truth can be concealed and how heavy the burden of guilt can become. As I sat in the courtroom watching the proceedings unfold, I couldn't help but reflect. It was a bittersweet victory, one that brought closure to Jamie's family, but at a significant cost. In the end, it wasn't just about solving a mystery or uncovering a secret. It was about seeking justice for a friend lost too soon. Like, like, like what I was trying to get at about the psychiatrist thing and stuff. It's like, OK, the reason I don't be fucking with these niggas and stuff is like this nigga wanted to get to the truth, right? So he invited people over to his house and told them it was going to be a party so he could ask them uncomfortable questions to judge how they would react. That's 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 like that's something that like a crazy person would do, is it not? Like like you came here, you invited these people to your house so you can manipulate a situation to go how you want to go so you can get these people to tell you something that you want to know. That's crazy. That's like, I don't know, man. That's like, it's a whole bunch of shit. It's weird. But anyway, bro, I hope that y'all enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, turn the post notification bells on. And peace, love, and positivity. And I will catch y'all in the next one, man.
It's two options in this world, is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not, you know you gotta choose Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos 